We ended up here in our last video after formatting. Now we're going to look at the power of the spreadsheet and just see what exactly the reason we've created it for exists in the first place. Now, I've populated the spreadsheet with data down in sheet B2. And for the most part, I just copied all of this across to give you some full feel and effect of the spreadsheet. But now let's just say that he, our male in this family, gets laid off that month. What happens to their income? I zero it out and voila, you instantly see the effect here, down here. You see the loss for the month and you see it in his semi-annual total. Well, what if the next month, because he was laid off, he made $1,650? So you can see that there are basically an infinite number of ways to adjust your expectations. If we need to not put money in savings for this period of time, we just select them and delete them. And so now he's back into positive numbers there. So it allows you to play what if scenarios, very, very powerful capability that is for many people who are having financial difficulties, truly life-changing. All right, let's look ahead. We see that they have total incomes for the half and a gross or a combined total income of $32,900. Wouldn't it be interesting to know what percentage of income was from their other income or from his or from hers? Alternatively, what percentage of expenses are going into housing or utilities? So here's how we would depict that. We're going to put a column in here at I, and we're going to divide the part, or in this case, his total semi-annual income by the whole, their total income. Okay, so part divided by whole gives you the calculation for percentage. And then we would carry that expression down, get the results for these three here, and then total up the cells above to get 100% if we did it all correctly. So let's see how we want to execute that. We're coming back here. We're going to type in percent. And notice how it bolted itself automatically a little bit of gee whiz, nice to know that that adopted or inherited the characteristics from the cell most adjacent to it if there is no gap. So it took that on. Now, how do we tell Excel that we would like to divide the part or his semi-annual total income divided by the whole or their total income? And we do that by putting H2 divided by H5. And if we hit that, we can see approximately 37.9 or 38% is, in fact, a good number. Now, I would like to be able to know her percentage of income and the other percentage of income as well. So the question is, can I copy that down the way I did the others? And the answer is no. And this is a very, very important learning point. Let's see what is going on here. H2 divided by H5 really translates to the cell that is 1 to my left divided by the cell that is 1 to my left and 1, 2, 3 below. Okay, That's what we told it to copy down here. We said, copy the cell that is 1 to my left, and 1 to my left, and 1, 2, 3 below. And obviously, that doesn't work. That's a, first of all, it's not what we wanted. And secondly, it gives us an error because we're attempting to divide by 0. We're going to discuss that in more detail on the next sheet. How can we remedy this? Well, we really did not want it to be divided by H6, we wanted it to be divided by H5. 
So how can we fix that? We make this initial formula into an absolute cell reference. We don't want this H5 to mean to excel the cell that's one to my left and three down. We hit F4. F4 is a toggle key that makes this thing absolute. So notice now it added the dollar sign H dollar sign five. That's Excel's notation for saying absolute column, absolute row. I'm going to toggle you through the next hitting of F4, changes it to relative column, absolute row. The next one gives you absolute column, relative row. And the last time takes us back to the default, which is relative cell referencing. Okay, that's a little bit confusing. For the moment, just remember, all you need to know is hit F4 one time to get two dollar signs, and that effectively locks the cell reference so that when I copy it down, it remains H5, only H5, and always H5. So let's do that now. Select that cell, get my handle, copy it down, and that's what I would expect to see. Now, let's make this the same numbers that we had before so that we can do a little easier math in our heads. And we can see that, you know, 5, uh, 5400 is roughly this, uh, oh, more or less a third of the other two, so 153045. I can do that math in my head and it works, all right? Let's go ahead now and we want the total here of these three cells. And we can do that very easily by copying this formula over. Okay, so now that, however, is a problem. That's not what we were looking for. What we're looking for is a format. Remember, format does not change the underlying value. It only changes the appearance. And that isn't what we're looking for either. So let's see what we've done here. What we've done is copied this range over. I thought we had this scenario that I'm going to add all the ones above. And there's what we're looking for is 100%. Okay, let's do the same thing rapidly down here. We're going to put equals the cell to my left divided by the total expenses. And we don't want total expenses to change as we copy it down, so we lock it with the F4 key. And then we drag it all the way down. We want that formatted as percentage, so we come up here and hit percent. We want to go ahead and put our formatting. We're going to drag this over, even though it's going to be the wrong number again, because we wanted that formatting. Now we're going to get the auto sum up here. This is just a quick way of doing what I taught you before, which is actually typing equals SUM plus the parenthesis. And one note of caution, the auto sum feature gives you the dancing ants around the perimeter of your range. Helpful if it's the right suggestion. Very dangerous if it's the wrong one. Always take it with a grain of salt. Always verify that you're getting the results you expect before you hit enter. And lastly, let's format this cell as percent. 